Welcome to the Pro Editor. The Pro Editor is an amazing tool designed to make mapping easy. It takes a bit of practice to remember the different hotkeys and techniques and such that you can use to make maps, but the practice is well worth investing time into because once you learn it, you'll see just how straightforward and intuitive map making can be. Now before we get started, I just want to preface this by saying that this guide is by no means a holy grail to mapping, okay? It's not going to tell you exactly everything you need to know and exactly how to do a specific thing, but it's more made to sort of bridge the gap between people who want to try mapping but aren't sure how. That being said, the guide will go over some key points to help you familiarize yourself with the editor and all the tools and techniques that once learning will hopefully make you a little more comfortable making maps. So the points that we're going to go over today for this video are the editor, and that includes things inside the editor like the tile sheet, the layers, the general techniques used for layering, uh, the tools in the top right, uh, the hotkeys as well, very important. Um, and that's about it for the editor. Uh, we'll be learning how to build a layout for a map as well. We'll be going over bodies of water and how to layer those correctly. Uh, a big important one is trees, learning how to plant trees properly, or place trees I guess you could say. Um, using paths and grass as well. Giving the illusion of depth for your map is quite important, so we'll be going over that too. And just generally decorating your maps as well with things like tree trunks and flowers and whatever you choose to use really. That, that one's mainly up to you. Uh, and at the very end of the video we'll go over some useful tile set pages that you can keep track of and you can have sort of some notes for just to help you with finding some more desirable tiles easily out of the, you know, 200 that we have. Alright, so with that being said, let's jump into the first talking point of this video and that is the editor. Alright, so starting off in the editor we have the tile sheet. So the tile sheet is on the left hand side here where you can find all the tiles you'd use to construct your map tile by tile. It's almost like placing pieces of Lego down to build something big. Uh, so you can left click any tile you want to use, you can see I'm left clicking here and the red square there is popping up, uh, and that'll let you know that you have it selected. But you don't have to do this just one tile at a time, if you start from the top left of any big object you want to use and you drag downwards, you can see it selects the entire thing there. Um, and so provided that you have the draw tool selected, which we'll get into a bit later, and you've also put it on uh, the appropriate layer, which we'll also get into a little bit later, uh, you can just place down some trees. You can see how it works like a charm. And this doesn't have to be used for just left click. You can see I have a blue box here and you can get that by doing right click the same as left click. Uh, and if you have something selected and you hold alt and left click, then you can see that we can place down the blue box instead. So you can do this quite efficiently with two tiles at a time. You can place one type of tree down and then another like that. Uh, and it really does help with speeding up your mapping. Okay, so next up we have the layers. So the layers can be found in the bottom right hand side of the screen here, and you don't want to worry too much about the C, that's mainly for uh, collision, which we're not very uh, interested in. So you mainly want to focus on these four right here. So the layers in the bottom right are the heart of map making, and it's how we decide how far in front or behind something we want our selected tile to appear. So having four layers to choose from, it might seem a little confusing at first, but I'll explain sort of which ones I use and how they work for me. Okay, so as you can see here, I've put a path down, and because this path has full blocks in terms of its sprite, you can see the grass here takes up any corners. We're actually allowed to put that on layer 1 with the grass itself. You can see I'm toggling the visibility of layer 1, and you can see I've got the path down on layer 1 with the grass behind it, and that's just fine. But for example, if you wanted to use a different type of path, say this one here that has some transparency, we can't put that on layer 1 because you can see it just replaces the grass underneath and so we're left with this ugly blue transparent uh, border around the path. So to get around this I recommend putting paths that don't have a full block on the second layer and as you can see it looks much better. We can get away with just putting that path down on the grass there and it looks just fine. Okay say you want to put some trees down, how would you go about doing that? Well you could just take the whole tree like this and um, place them down one by one but that doesn't look too great, you know, it's not as dense as we want it to be. It could look could definitely look a lot better. Um, so there's a little technique that we use that makes trees a little more compact, closer together, uh, and just in general a lot easier to place down. Um, so this is called the 4-3-2 rule, um, or the 2-3-4 rule, depending about which way you go about it. I like to do 4-3-2, and what that means is you start on the fourth layer, and you go from the very top of the tree, and you just start placing all your trees down next to each other like this. You see if I turn the grid on, I am literally just placing the trees down next to each other. What you would do then is you would take the next step down, 
of the on the uh, tree there and you would go to the very next layer so do layer three and you can see I'm putting down these layers here um, and then finally you do the same thing with layer two so you put the layer two down just like that and this might not look too special right now but what this allows you to do is it allows you to stack trees and make them look much more uh, full and uh, dense so for example if I want to make these look like a thicker tree line I would go one down and one to the left, just like that. And then I can just do the same thing I did up the top there. Just place down a bunch of trees, just like that. And then we would do the same thing we did up the very top row. So I would go to the third layer. I would put down these trees. So just like this. You see sometimes it can be a bit finicky, but that's fine. And then moving on to the fourth layer, we can do that just up here as well. And you can see already this tree line looks much more compact and so we can keep doing that so if we take the bottom layer again and we see how we went down one into the left if I want to make it full up here I'm gonna go up one into the right making sure that you're on the correct layer just like that and you can toggle the visibility of the layers so that you can see exactly what you're placing and you know what? I'm gonna do it up here as well we'll make this entirely full of trees And already, you can see, that is a nice, compact, and tight-looking forest. It's good. It's very dense. So if you practice this sort of layering technique with trees, you can apply it to basically any tree you like. So you could use these trees here if you like. It's no big deal. You could even use the pine trees. Um, you could use, you know, any tree, really. Some trees have different heights and widths than normal trees, so you'd have to try and translate your ability to do these smaller trees into these larger ones. Um, that might take a little bit of practice, but it's worth it because it looks really great if you can pull it off. Okay, time to talk about some cliff edges, everybody's favorite. So if you want to add some depth to your map, not have it just be a flat plane like this, you can use the ledges that you can find on Tileset 10. There are also some others later on, uh, which we'll get into. So you can see, it's very simple, all you want to do Place it on layer number two and just slowly sketch out your path that you want to create. These four here, the ones on the right hand side of the tiles are going to be the inner corners. So you can see if I select this inner corner and then we keep going down, it's going to create a nice looking um, there we go, it's going to create a nice looking little ledge there. So you just want to take it nice and slow, use whichever um, ledges you'd like to use, um, and you can double up on this. So say now I want to make it look a little rocky, I'm just going to take the rocky looking one, place these down, and so you can see we've started to create a little mountainside here, which is nice. And this can be used in the reverse effect as well, say you want to have a little ditch, all you would do is you would do the complete opposite of what you've done here. So I would want to make something that goes down like this. Uh, this is just a small little example. Obviously, you can do much more with this. Just like that. And so you can see that we've created the inverse of this, where the tiles then go down instead of up. So translating this skill set, you can make mountains, you can make ditches, you can make anything you want really that has elevation or depressions in the landscape. So it's just about experimenting and seeing what works for you and what you like. So moving on to some water edges now. So water edges can be found on tileset page 24. And generally the rule for these is to stick to layer 3 for the water edges and the water. So you can see I've selected layer 3 down here. And all I'm going to do is, well we'll even do it up here right next to the path. Just create a little border for any body of water that I might want. You don't have to do this like a straight square, obviously you can do this any way that you like. So if I do this here, you can see, and then we fill that up on layer three, oops, you can see that we have a nice little body of water. Um, so that looks okay, it's not fantastic. Later on we'll go into how to create uh, deeper looking bodies of water, um, 
They look a little more impressive and just in general nicer to the eyes. Okay, now moving on to putting down some houses. I'm sure everybody here has wanted to put a house or two down in a map before, so I'm going to show you how to do that. It's quite simple. The way that I like to do it, I look for the shadow on the side here, and I will select up to the shadow, just like that, and then put that one down on layer 3. So you could put that anywhere, so I'll put it right here. And then everything past the shadow is what I like to put on layer number 4. So what this means is that if we look at this, the player will be able to walk up to here, but not through there. But behind this roof, the player would be able to walk past and walk around. And obviously the roof would appear in front of the player. And so you can do this with any building you like. If you wanted to do it with something like this, you would select up to where the shadow is, just like that. Go back to layer 3. Place down your house. Oops, and I've selected the wrong thing there. And then you select your your roof, put it on layer 4, just like that. And so you can see now we've got a couple houses down. Obviously, like I keep saying, this is not the standard at which you should be placing down houses right next to each other. This is just an example. You get the idea. Okay, now a special little case here. Let's say we wanted to put a waterfall down. So we can do that by extending our water over here. Maybe we just want to get rid of this path because it was for showcase and I'm sure you can just go back to it if you need to have a look at it again. Um, say our little water here decides that it wants to extend down this way. I don't know, maybe it's it's just feeling a little, uh, a little zesty. Really, who knows? So just like that. Just like that. Um, and then the water continues down here. Let's just say, as an example, we have a section where the water decides to flow down into a waterfall. Okay, so waterfalls can be found on tile set number 109, and it's really simple to use. I tend to use the smaller one just because you can use either one for either situation. It's the same thing. Um, so I would start with the smaller one, and wherever you want the waterfall to be, make sure you're on layer 4 because waterfalls go on layer 4. You would just click the very top part there and then take this middle part and run it down here um, and then you would take your actual crashing water that falls down just like that. Um, and so that's appearing on layer 4 which is fine and just like that you can see we already have a beautiful little waterfall. And I know that doesn't look too fantastic in the editor, but you have to remember that in the game this is animated and so it looks much more, um, you know, full of life and it looks interesting. Uh, but that's generally how you would go about putting down a waterfall in the editor. Okay, moving on to the tools up in the top right here. I'll try and explain these as best I can. So the tools, the only ones you want to worry about is the draw and the fill tool. So the fill tool is what you use to fill up a certain section with a certain tile, similar to the paint bucket tool and paint. Say for whatever crazy reason I would want to fill this whole area up in, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go with the wild encounter grass. You would just select the layer you want to put it on, so I'll put it on layer 2. And then you select the fill tool and just click and you can see everything. So this is on layer 2, which means everything inside the section that isn't on layer 2 is going to get filled up with grass. And then the draw tool is basically just like the pencil tool and paint. You can use this to place down anything that you have selected onto the current layer that you have selected. So if I want to put down some grass, you can see I can do that just fine. Okay, now as for working your way around the editor and making it more workflow friendly, um, we have some hotkeys that you might find useful. So I'll go over them now. There are some very basic ones that you might already anticipate are going to be in the editor, such as Control Z to get rid of anything that you might not want to have placed down, um, and Control Y to reverse that. So that's undo and then redo. Uh, a very useful one that you'll find incredibly helpful on your journey is using tab or the middle mouse button. So if you select the correct layer for an object that you want to look at uh, and then you push tab, you'll see it takes you to the layer here. So the layer was 109. If I take this back to zero, I push tab, it takes me to 108. Sometimes it can be a little bit finicky. Sometimes you might find a problem with the page that has the correct tile on it not being visible. Now if this happens you just need to scroll all the way back to page number 1 and then manually make your way back to where it was, so page 109, and it should appear. That's just a bug in the editor, we're hoping it's going to get fleshed out sometime soon, uh, but for now we just have to deal with it. Um, using F1 to F4 is pretty important, it lets you enable and disable layers so you can see and, you know, 
debug any problems that you might have. You can see it gets rid of layer 4, and then layer 3, and then layer 2, and then layer 1. So very helpful, I definitely recommend using that. Uh, similarly to F1 to F4, you can use 1 to 6 to select the 6 different tools that we have there. Not as useful considering we're only going to be using 2 tools, and most of the time you're only going to be using the draw tool. But it's just nice to know and nice to have. One that I recommend almost everybody use is the G key on your keyboard. This disables and enables the grid and it's very helpful for getting a sense of how your map looks without the grid being there. Um, and generally I think it's just less of an eyesore to get rid of it. So something that's quite important to know is if you hold shift, you can then left click on whichever tile you have selected on the layer and it will remove it. Um, and similarly, if you hold control, you can create a square of a certain tile and it will place it down. Now, this is very helpful if you're doing straight lines of things and you don't want to mess it up like that. You can just hold control and make a straight line. Alright, and that's going to do it for the basics of the editor. That's pretty much everything that you need to know to be able to survive and thrive using this thing. Um, now we're going to switch over to something like building a layout for a level and how I tend to go about doing that. Okay, so generally when it comes to building a layout, I tend to start with layering the cliff edges to sort of map out how I want the landscape to look. After I've done that, I tend to move on to the sides and the uh, actual tops of any large bodies of water. And this should give you a general shape including any sort of grassy area, any sort of rocky mountainous area, or any sort of water or pond you might want to have. After I have the layout sorted, I move on to placing down some trees. Now there's a whole process I got into earlier about placing down trees, but the general gist is as long as you use layer 2 for the very bottom, layer 3 for the middle of the tree, and then layer 4 for the very top, you should be fine. It's quite important to get into the habit of doing it this way because it makes the trees much more compact and look like a real forest, and ultimately it's going to make your map look a lot, lot better. Once the trees are down, I'll move on to the paths in the wild Pokemon grass, making sure to break up the paths so it's not just one straight path from point A to point B. And using wild Pokemon grass is sort of semi-sparingly to allow for patches of encounter grass in certain areas around my path. Next I'll move on to the depth of the map. And depth in a Pokemon map is actually really important because it turns a flat looking bland map into something that looks like it might pop out of the screen. Immersing the player is really important so make sure to add varying heights to your mountain area and a sense of depth in your water areas generally getting deeper as you go further away from the water edge. Last up when making a Pokemon map is decorating. When it comes to decorating a map, the sky's the limit really. Like, I don't want to put a limit on your creativity, so I'll, I'll leave it up to your best judgement to decorate the map with flowers, fallen logs, tree stumps, gravestones, you know, shells, coral, just whatever you want to put in your map really. Now, just remember though, in some areas, in tight situations, it's good to remember that less can be more with decorations. Try not to spam too much, but I think it should be fine. And as you can see, with those decorations down, we have a finished map here. Now, I don't want you to think that this is exactly how a map should look. In fact, I actively encourage you to do whatever it is you want to do. You know, the more new things that you find out about, the better, because then it means you're expanding your skill set and you get more comfortable with it. So don't try to create exactly what I've made. Definitely go off and do your own thing, and make sure to post your maps in the Discord server. We'll be interested to see what you make. Now I'm just going to end this little guide here off with some very useful tileset pages that you could use on screen right now and also in the description down below. So feel free to save that if you like, you can use them for anything, there's lots of different variety of tiles there. And definitely feel free to have a look outside of the tilesets we've given you. Um, seriously, the sky's the limit, it's amazing what you can make using this program. So with that being said, I'm excited to see what you guys can make and thank you very much for watching. If you have any other questions, comments or concerns, definitely do hit me up on Discord. I'll leave my Discord tag in the description down below, so feel free to contact me there. And with that, I hope you learned something today and I'll see you later.